Good morning, church. It's Friday morning. Take your Bibles and let's go to Acts chapter number 13. As we look at the uh, preaching of Paul, the perils of Paul, if you will, as he's traveling with Barnabas and, and with John Mark, and they're sharing the gospel. We're picking it up in chapter 13, verse 13. It says, And when Paul and his party set sail, now notice again, the Paul and his party. It started off Barnabas and Saul. Now it's Paul's party, if you will. Paul has uh, just this ability to do things that others weren't able to do. That's what makes him such a great man. God used him. He had a holy boldness. And Barnabas was a reconciler anyway. He, he kind of was that guy that would willingly submit in most places. But we see them going from uh, Paphos, and he says, to Perga. They came to Pamphylia. And he says that John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Now, that's going to be an issue for another day, but John Mark got started on this journey, and I don't know if it was hardships. Uh, maybe he got sick to his stomach, eating the kind of foods and drinking the water of different places. Uh, Paul was pretty hard on him, so it must have been that he just abandoned the work. He didn't want to get too far away. They were getting ready to go from Cyprus, and they were going to go up into uh, what is called Asia Minor, and they were going to be a lot longer away from home. And maybe he got homesick. I, I, I don't know. Maybe he just kind of felt like, hey, I'm not needed. They, they got Barnabas, they got Paul. Whatever reason he decided to, to go back, we need to be very careful that when we make a commitment to, to a ministry, that we continue on. But at the same time, we also need to recognize that uh, Paul probably later on should have been just a little bit more gracious. Sometimes there's reasons that people leave that we just don't know of. And yet, we, we don't want to break fellowship with them. We don't want to punish them because of a, a decision they made on the spur of a moment. But this is just the way it is. Missionary works hard. Uh, going from place to place in places where you don't speak the language, where dangers are always there. Maybe it's the persecution. Every time he, he went somewhere, Paul seemed to be in persecution. And, and John Mark just said, this, this isn't for me. And so John Mark re returns uh, back to Jerusalem. Verse 14. But when they had departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia. This is not the Antioch in Syria. This is farther north, uh, in fact, closer to where Paul's hometown of Tarsus is. And they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and they sat down. But notice again Paul's pattern. The Sabbath day, he knew that would be a Saturday, that people would gather in the synagogues, that Jews would. Paul being a Jew, Barnabas being a Jew, they would go and they would be in the synagogue. Undoubtedly, Paul would ask the leader of the synagogue, the ruler, uh, you mind if I have a few moments to share some words? Uh, about what's going on in Jerusalem concerning the Messiah. And most of the time, he would be granted opportunity to share what was going on. So it says, after the reading of the law and the prophets, they would read some of the scriptures uh, out of the law, out of the prophets, various readings. It says, uh, the ruler of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word or exhortation from the people, say on. You got something you'd like to say? Go ahead. And here starts Paul's sermon. Now, I want you to do, just we're just going to go through the sermon. Now, notice his sermon. It's not like mine, oftentimes alliterated, and I try to organize everything and have time. He just simply tells the story of Jesus. Every time you see a sermon in the book of Acts, it's about Jesus and his resurrection, and then also calling the people to faith and to uh, sanctification. So he stood up. And he motioned with the hand said, now here's the sermon, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and exalted the people where they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, with a strong right hand, he brought them out of it. So now for a time of about 40 years, he put up with their ways in the wilderness, with their rebellious ways because they wouldn't follow him. They wouldn't go into the promised land, and God put up with them for 40 years. 
And what he had destroyed, seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land to them by allotment. After that, he gave them judges for about 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And he's given a history lesson of all that God is doing in preparing the children of Israel for their coming Messiah. And afterwards, they asked for a king. So God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Which, by the way, this Saul who was preaching, he's also of the tribe of Benjamin, named not undoubtedly after Saul, the king. <clears throat> when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king. To whom also he gave testimony, said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Now from this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a Savior, Jesus. The reason he's talking about all this is because these Jews would have known those basic things. How God delivered Israel out of Egypt. How they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. They finally got to the promised land. Through the days of the judges, they were rebellious, but God raised them up judges. They wanted a king. Saul didn't fit the bill, so God removed him. God gave him David with the promise, and all of them knew this, that one of David's sons, that is David's descendants, would sit on the throne. And now he gets to Jesus, that he gave us Jesus, the Savior of Israel. After John had first preached before his coming, this is John the baptizer, John the Baptist, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not he, but behold, there comes one after me, the sandal of whose feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to you the word of salvation has been sent. In other words, I've got the plan, God's plan of salvation. I've got God's man of salvation. It's Jesus. You need to listen. This is all this that God has been doing in the past was for this very hour so that you might be able to have salvation. For those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, having fulfilled them in condemning him, and they fulfilled the scriptures by condemning Jesus. The prophet said that they would reject their own Messiah. Now when they had fulfilled all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the tree, they laid him in a tomb, but God raised him from the dead, and he was seen for many days by those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to the people. And we declare to you glad tidings, that promise which was made to our fathers. God has fulfilled this to us, their children, and that he has raised up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken this, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Therefore he also said in another psalm, Notice how the, the sermon is filled with Scripture. You will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, he fell asleep. He was buried with his fathers. His body did see corruption. So he wasn't talking about David. So he, he says, so who did God raise up with, with no corruption? Therefore, that, uh, He's talking about Jesus. That's the one that, who was raised up with no corruption. Therefore, let it be made known to you, brethren, that through this man, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified for all things, for which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken by the prophet comes tr true to you, uh, upon you as well. They said this, Behold, you despisers, marvels, marvel and perish for I work a work in your days a work which you will by no means believe the one who declares it to you so it was that when the Jews went out of the synagogue the Gentiles begged that these words would be preached to them the next Sabbath now the author of the book of Acts is not going to go through every sermon only occasionally will you get a sermon but almost every sermon will begin that way with the Jews 
talking about how God has promised the Messiah, a descendant of David, how Jesus fits the bill, what Jesus did through miracles and wonders, and then how he was then crucified, how he then raised from the dead, and how he is being rejected by the Jewish people, the Jewish nation, just like the Jewish nation rejected God after he delivered them from Egypt. And they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And so this is going to be a common theme as he goes from place to place, preaching Jesus as the Messiah. We would call this, again, apostolic preaching because that's how the apostles preached. They just made it full of Jesus. Full of scriptures, yes, but how Jesus is the one who can deliver us from our sins. And only in Jesus can we find forgiveness. That tells us much about how we, as we go out into the culture, need to, to declare Jesus and just talk about Jesus as the one who can save us from our sins, who can forgive us, and who can give us everlasting life. Well, let's give it a try today as we go out. Let's share Jesus. Father, we thank you that we have the blessed hope. We thank you that we have the gospel, the good news, that we can declare it to others. Help us not to shirk our duties, but to proclaim Christ openly and often. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.